Welcome back aboard Arabella. This week, stick around to watch how the boat and crew got through their first tropical storm on the water. Hurricane Lee is fast approaching, so let's go collect Anne so we have some local knowledge and an extra hand while we move Arabella. And let's look at a chart and see if we can find a couple little spots where we can go check out and see if we can find a place to hide and be protected for this hurricane. It'll be Arabella's first hurricane and our first hurricane on the water, if it maintains that. They're saying it might drop down to uh, a tropical storm, but anyway you cut it, it's a real big blow coming in and we need to get someplace that is safe for Arabella and safe for us to ride this thing out. And thankfully, we have some local knowledge from Ann and Carolyn and Aaron, and we're gonna go try Ann's spot that she suggests, which is out here on North Haven Island. So a few places in here, you know, we could come in to, to Southern Harbor. We've got 16, 17, 10, nine feet of water. But the spot that Ann recommended is this tiny little spot here called Minister's Cove. So this is a pretty sweet spot, I think, to ride this out. Now, <clears throat> Anne said that she's been there before and that it has good holding. So we're gonna drop anchor. She said there's a couple moorings in here. And as you can see, we've got good topography. So right here, we've got a couple contour lines that this ridge runs. We've got even more cover back here and we've got more high land over here. So what we're hoping is that kind of no matter what this storm does, these winds are going to be pushed up over the land, and we're going to be tucked in a little hollow, and hopefully that will keep us out of the worst of the wind. It will certainly keep us out of the waves, because there's just not enough room in here uh, for it to really develop a nasty sea state. Uh, there's just just not enough fetch, not enough distance for those waves to grow. The water is really shallow, um, but it's plenty deep enough for us. So 11 feet, 17 feet, we just got to make sure that we stay away from this three and four foot shoal. I haven't been to North Haven Island since I sea kayaked around it in 2004. Um, so I'm excited to go back and hopefully, hopefully this isn't too busy in here. And if it is, Anne's got a few other spots that we can go check out. Are you ready?
anchor pretty much right where my friend Milo anchored about a week ago. Wait, a week ago? Oh, shit. That was like a month ago. Anyway, um, these beautiful houseboats had a big party out here, and there was a band playing on top of that one. This one's basically my dream house. So I'll go, I'll go back up and you can watch the pennant. Yeah. The pennant will come up and pull tight. Okay. And this should stay loose the whole time. Oh, okay. Gotcha. Here we go. Nice. So what we're going to do is we're going to look at two things in relation to each other. Eventually we're going to stop. The next morning, Steve and Akiva brought Anne to shore so she could catch the next ferry off the island. Just beyond the mouth of the harbor, the sea was already starting to kick up ahead of the storm. Swinging back to the boat to pick up Robin, they went ashore on the strip of land protecting Arabella to the north, where the wind was forecast to come from. The center of the storm would make landfall in Nova Scotia, about 200 miles to the east. So that's pulpit rock that the sailboat is currently passing behind. And Anne was telling us there's a 300-year-old osprey nest on that rock. Checking out the beaches before the storm. We're hoping that it'll be calm enough where we are to leave in the tender in the teeth of the storm and come over here and check this out. Because this will be on the windward side and should be getting beat. And we will be on the leeward side and it should be pretty calm. Windy, but much calmer sea state. So we got about 12 hours or so before things are supposed to start getting a little rowdy. And we got about 24 hours before things are forecasted to be really bad. Uh, we're gonna go up to the staysail. We're gonna go lash that down first.
this uh, further line here is something that I need to finish up. There's got to be leads and a, probably a jam cleat for it. But for right now, it's tied off to the tow rail here really well. Oh, that shouldn't run away. We'll keep an eye on it as the storm progresses. One of the big risks is that jib unfurling and sailing is off the anchor. So we want to make sure that we got a couple good wraps up there and that this is tied off nice and tight and that there's nothing for it to chafe on because uh, that's bad news bears. Hurricane Day vibes. Although I don't think it's a hurricane anymore. I think it's just a tropical storm. What do you think? I think we're in the most perfect place we could possibly be for a hurricane. We don't have to worry about losing power. I didn't have to worry about not being able to make coffee this morning. <laughs> and we're, it's really not that bad. I mean, you can see in the harbor, it looks gnarly. But this harbor is pretty safe and protected. Yeah, it's way. It was way worse in Bristol. Yeah, yeah definitely. Than, than where we are now. We yeah, that's wrong. That's wrong. Felt way worse. Uh, we're gonna make some beverages here and get suited up. I took it apart when I cleaned you it. You sure did, honey. Did not <laughs> notice. <laughs> we are monitoring. 77 so normally 16 is what you would put on that's your general monitoring but we had a couple a boat show up yesterday afternoon with our neighbor on it and the harbor master and they were running around making sure everybody was good to go for the blow and had what they needed and they started asking about the boat and where we got it and robin was like this crazy guy cut down the trees and built it and they're like what we know some people like that. You're one of those. <laughs> um, and they stopped by later in the day and said that they were going to eat oysters and wood-fired pizza. And did we want to go with them and fuel up before the storm came? And our answer was a resounding yes. We will pretty much never pass up oysters. Or pizza. Or pizza, wood-fired pizza. <laughs> so we jumped in there tender with them and jumped in a black van and headed to what we later found out was the harbor master's house who also is an oyster farmer here on uh, north haven we had a great time we brought some oysters back and the harbor master told us to put it on 77 and that's what they monitor here in this particular harbor and that he would reach out to us and make sure that we were good and if he could he was going to try to make it out for coffee this morning and i don't know I feel like he might make it if he doesn't <laughs> mind getting a little wet. So we will see. So Akiva doesn't particularly seem to care about the storm, but normally he gets to go up on deck first thing in the morning, and he's not pleased that he can't do that. And I'm sure he's got to go to the bathroom, but we're going to get woken up here a little bit, get some tea and coffee in us, put on our foul weather gear, and see if we can fight our way and get this guy to shore this morning. Because so far, Akiva refuses to go to the bathroom on the boat. As I promised, Bob, running her up on rocky beaches. <laughs> where we stashed our paddle boards for the storm. Oh, Akiva very much wants these raccoons.
lot calmer over here. My home looking pretty solid. Oh boy. Pancakes and bacon and eggs. Good fuel to sit on our butts. I vote for more hurricane days. More hurricane days? This is lovely. Yeah, well, this time it's lovely. Oh, I know. We might not always be in such a nice spot. That was breezy. That was a gust. Breakfast is ready. Oh, thank you, my love. So I think it was definitely sportier when we were in Bristol. For sure. We had that wind blowing yeah. in. But that was on a mooring. So it was a little different. This was our first, first anything really on an anchor. Yeah. We've anchored a few times, but it's always been really calm. We had a little mm -hmm. wind in P-Town, but not yeah, like nothing what we had crazy. for this. Yeah. This, there was a ton of wind, but it was almost more overhead. Like you, like you could hear it like whipping around up there, but we were pretty protected because the land on Sedgwick Point gets pretty high. Yeah. And then when we walked around, even down to the market, it we went way uphill. Yeah. We were like looking down over the ocean into the marina. Yeah. So I think we were really protected. It's one of the great things about the, the bold coast up here. There's a lot of places where you've got long sandy beaches and there's no place to go hide but up here in Maine these spots like this are I don't want to say a dime a dozen but they're really all over the place. Yeah, this was beautiful. And we weren't the only ones hiding in here. Nope. There were a few unattended boats but we had two other decent sized boats with folks on them. One wooden one, one fiberglass one. Everyone was kind of keeping an eye on each other but no moorings moved or anchored in drag. We let out some more chain right before the storm hit. So we were sitting on almost 100 feet of chain. Yeah. Thankfully, there wasn't many boats in here, so we could have a, a big swing. Everybody else was onto a mooring. Oh, yeah. Steve and I are going to move the boat by ourselves back to the mooring in Rockland. It'll be our first time handling the boat completely independently, just the two of us. Um, I feel prepared for it. We've definitely put some practice in. I think we're ready. So I'm pretty excited. I've been looking forward to this moment for a long time and it's never been quite right. We weren't sure if we were going to be able to get somebody to help us move the boat to here. So that was something that we were maybe going to have to do on our own if there was no better option. But thankfully, Ann was able to help us out. Uh, and mostly, we were just unsure about if we showed up here and there was a bunch of boats and exactly how to judge where we should put the anchor. We don't have a, a ton of practice with that. And then if we didn't end up being here, we were going to go to a few different other places. So Anne had local knowledge on all of those. So it was kind of, it was really nice to have her for that. But we've been here, we've come in and out. We know what this looks and feels like. And we've been in and out of Rockland now and we know what that looks and feels like. And we might have some mildly sporty conditions going across, um, but we've been out in the boat and way worse. It's not a great distance. Um, so I'm, I'm pretty psyched. Shortly after Akiva's nap, Steve was standing on the foredeck when he suddenly noticed the furler floating past him. The bronze bowsprit end cap that had come from Victoria had snapped. Yep. After lowering the sail, they made the rest of the way to Rockland under motor. Oh, 
sweetie darling. <laughs> it's alright, we met we handled it. So I'll put an Allen key in here, we'll take this gate out and then we should be able to lower and take the sail off and get it in a bag overnight until I fix this. Tender. Yep. Dude, we just went for a super long walk. Akiva, we literally just walked seven and a half miles. He was like, yeah, but. Not enough? There's raccoons okay. on the mainland. Let's go. Come on. Come on. <laughs> Good boy. <laughs> <laughs>